Hi, everyone. This is E. David Crawford. I'm Editor-in-Chief at Grand Rounds in Neurology. Testosterone replacement therapy has been engulfed in controversy uh, since it began many decades ago. Uh, one of the reasons were all these T replacement clinics and sort of overuse, and another one was a, a concern about cardiovascular side effects of testosterone replacement therapy, uh, gaining it a black box warning. Just recently, a few weeks ago, a pivotal study was published in New England Journal of Medicine with over 5,000 men ages 45 to 80 where testosterone replacement therapy was studied. Joining me to discuss the impact of this trial is Dr. Mo Kara, who is a professor and Brantley Scott Chair at Baylor in Dallas. Mo uh, has really dedicated his career to a lot of areas, but one of them has been this testosterone replacement and male health. So Mo, can you share with us uh, why there was an FDA mandate, uh, the results of this study, and uh, explain what impact this is going to have in the future? Thanks for joining us. Hi, I'm Mo Kara, Professor of Urology at Baylor College of Medicine, and today I'd like to give you an update on testosterone and cardiovascular disease, and really an update on the TRAVERSE trial. These are my disclosures. So just to put this in the context of a story, you know, many years ago, we published a study looking at all the articles we could find on testosterone and cardiovascular disease. And when you look at over 200 articles, what you'd find is that the majority of the articles suggest that low testosterone increases cardiovascular risk and that normalizing testosterone may decrease cardiovascular risk. However, around this time, there were four articles that suggested that giving testosterone may increase the risk of a heart attack. These were the four articles. The first article that was brought up was in 2010 in JAMA by Dr. Basaria. Uh, this was a randomized placebo-controlled trial, but the endpoint was not cardiovascular disease, suggesting increased cardiovascular risk. The other articles, the Vigan article in 2013, the Zoo article in 2013, and the Finkel article in 2014 were not randomized placebo-controlled trials, suggesting that there may be some increased risk. Because of this, in 2015, the FDA made a change to the label under the warning and precaution section, suggesting that testosterone products have now been inconclusive in determining whether they increase the risk of MACE, myocardial infarction, or stroke and that patients should be informed before taking testosterone, or if they wish to continue taking testosterone, that they may have an increased cardiovascular risk. Many of the other societies throughout the world, including the European Medicine Agency, which is very similar to the FDA, declined to make any changes to their uh, label at that time. But around 2015, the FDA uh, in uh, gave guidance. And the guidance was that we are also requiring manufacturers of approved testosterone products to conduct a well-designed clinical trial to more clearly address the question of whether an increased risk of heart attack or stroke exists among users of these products. And this was really the genesis of the TRAVERSE trial. Around this time, there were three other factors that were occurring. First, the use of testosterone in men were starting to decline around 2014 and 15, and the use declined more precipitously in men who had a history of cardiovascular disease. Second, there was much litigation at this time uh, in terms of patients who claiming that the testosterone increased their risk for heart attack and stroke. And third, around this time, there was a significant increase in the guidelines that were released. The AUA guidelines and the ENDO guidelines were released around 2018, and many guidelines also concluded that uh, low testosterone increases cardiovascular risk, but there was no definitive evidence suggesting that giving testosterone increased cardiovascular risk, but more studies needed to be done. Therefore, it was very important to have the TRAVERSE trial. This is the largest randomized placebo-controlled trial with testosterone in men ever published. This is men between the ages of 45 and 80 years old, and they only took men who had cardiovascular disease, a history of cardiovascular disease, or an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. These men had to have a low testosterone, less than 300. There were 6,000 patients initially randomized. That later was less than, uh, less than 6,000 men, and the follow-up was intended to be five years. So these are the two criteria. Either you had to have a 
pre-existing cardiovascular disease, meaning either pre-existing coronary artery disease, pre-existing cerebrovascular disease, or pre-existing peripheral arterial disease, or you had to have three cardiovascular risk factors, and the risk factors were hypertension, dyslipidemia, current smoker, end-stage kidney disease, elevated C-reactive protein, diabetes, elevated coronary calcium score, or a patient over the age of 65. Men were randomized to testosterone gel or placebo. Uh, blood, draws were, uh, blood draws were occurred at 2, 4, 12, 26 uh, weeks and at months 12, 18, 24, 36, and 48. Uh, patients had to be titrated between the uh, testosterone levels of 350 and 750 nanogram per deciliter, and you had to have a hematocrit less than 54 to be in the trial. Primary endpoint was MACE. In other words, uh, time from randomization to the first occurrence of any component of MACE, of non-fatal myocardial infarction, non-fatal stroke, or death due to cardiovascular causes. Secondary endpoints were incidence of MACE or cardiovascular revascularization procedures uh, or surgery such as a cabbage. But other secondary endpoint was prostate safety. The incidence of high-grade prostate cancer as defined as a, a pathologic Gleason score of four plus three or higher. Uh, there were five other secondary endpoints. These included sexual function, uh, depression, fracture, bone fracture, diabetes, and anemia. Tertiary endpoints included other cardiovascular safety parameters, including DVT, PE, and thromboembolism. And the other prostate safety endpoints included assessing BPH, and looking at patients' uh, incidence of receiving uh, BPH treatment, such as CHIRP uh, procedures. The study started in May of 20, 2018, and it ended in January of 2023. Uh, and then these first initial uh, data was published uh, or presented at the ENDO meeting in June of 2023. So what do we have? We had roughly 2,601 patients in the testosterone arm, uh, 2,603 patients in the placebo arm, uh, one, roughly 1,000 patients completed the study uh, drug in both arms. The mean duration of the study was roughly 22 months for both groups, and the mean duration of follow-up was roughly 33 months for both groups. This, the uh, demographics were relatively the same in both groups. They were over the, most of the patients, uh, almost half were over the age of 65. Uh, BMI was elevated in both groups, roughly 35. Uh, both groups started with a low testosterone value of 220 nanogram per deciliter. The groups also had very similar uh, pre-existing uh, characteristics in terms of coronary artery disease, cerebrovascular disease, and peripheral uh, arterial disease as well. Uh, they Both groups had relatively the same number of percentage of patients on a statin as well. And the take-home findings were the following. Uh, testosterone values did significantly increase in those men who started testosterone therapy. Uh, that average increase was roughly 150 nanogram per deciliter in those patients who started the testosterone gel. But the key slide is this one. There was no significant difference in cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, in both populations between placebo and testosterone. There was no significant difference. If you look more closely at the secondary endpoints in terms of cardiovascular safety, there was no significant difference between testosterone or the placebo group as well. What we did see though, was there was a slight increase in VTE, venous thromboembolism. Uh, it was 1.7% versus 1.2% of patients in the placebo arm. And if you break down that VTE, you'll see that the difference is roughly 0.9% versus 0.5% in the placebo arm. Again, small, but uh, was noted. And finally, two other interesting findings was that there was a slight increase in uh, atrial fibrillation in those patients that took testosterone. It was roughly 3.5% versus 2.4%. And there was a slight increased risk of acute kidney injury, 2.3% versus 1.5%. So in conclusion, the Traverse is the largest randomized placebo-controlled trial in hypogonadal men to date among middle-aged or older men with hypogonadism who had a history of established cardiovascular disease or who were at high risk for incidence of cardiovascular events. Testosterone for a mean duration of 22 months did not increase the risk of major cardiovascular events. Thank you very much for your attention.